If you're getting that hip pain, there is one secret muscle that most people don't know about that's usually causing the hip pain. And I'm gonna show you exactly not only where to find it, but what you can do at home to help it. I'm Dr. Matthew Pozo, welcome to my page. My page is dedicated to people and families with health tips and tricks so you can live the life you were designed to live. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this information with the people we know need it the most. Here's a quick review. We got the pelvis, you got all the low back, the nerves coming out. And the big thing here is when you look at the ball and socket and the way that this is designed, it is designed to sit into this, but it's really governed by a ton of muscles. So there are a lot of different reasons why people get hip pain, uh, pelvis pain, and just pain that runs down their legs. So there's so many types of things. And in one of my other videos, I've gone through hip mobility exercises and a routine that you can do. And so if you're looking for that, just click up above and that'll take you right to that video. I'm gonna reveal one of the, probably the top muscle that most people complain about. It's super easy to find, but really this is the one that's causing the problem. Other reasons why people actually get issues in the hips could be, yeah, you know, your feet could be misaligned. You could be walking lopsided. Your shoes could be a problem. Um, poor arches. Uh, your knees can have issues. If you have knees issues, uh, grinding of the knees, degeneration, or you probably need a, new, uh, a knee surgery, or you've had a knee surgery, and now you're noticing it in the hip. Um, it could be things like degeneration, arthritis, and there's different forms of arthritis. There could be fractures. There could be tears. There could be... There's so many reasons why people and, uh, can get a hip problem. So number one, and I, would, and, I, and I can't stress this enough, if you're not under regular type of chiropractic care, make sure that you're under chiropractic care. As a chiropractor, we're looking for a few different things, but really the other reason, and it's, this thing is missed the most, and this isn't still the muscle that I'm gonna be talking to you about today, but the nerves that come out of the spine well, the ones, if you look at the low back, so these nerves down here, the nerves that come out of like the upper low back. So if you're getting pain in the low back and you're feeling that and you're getting the hip pain, well, chances are that the nerves that come out of your L1, your L2, maybe even your L3 in this area are being compromised. And when those nerves are being compromised, those are the nerves that go down to the hip. And so you can actually have a nerve irritation problem, a subluxation in your low back that's causing that and you're, this whole time you're thinking it's your hip. That's number one. Number two, you can have sacroiliitis, which is the pelvis misalignment. So one of these bones are misaligned, the big bone here. And as that misalignment happens, the nerve shoots to the front of the hip. And so you're getting that side hip pain. And that can be another reason the top muscle that causes most people's issues and the secret is something called the tfl the tensor fascia lata now this muscle in particular if we look at the pelvis it runs in the front of the pelvis so it's right here and what happens is this is a, a, another way of landmarking this muscle is it's the hands in the pocket muscle if i put my hands in my pocket where your hands go on top of where your hand sits is generally where that muscle is. And that muscle goes right on top of the greater trochanter, this part of your hip bone, and that can actually cause a lot of irritation. In fact, if that area is super tight, chances are it's gonna go down your leg, it's gonna influence the, the band in your leg, the side of your leg, and that can even go right down to your knee so it can actually influence your knee. Uh, it can cause bursitis, which is now all of a sudden the, there's a bursa, there's like a sac, a fluid filled sac that sits right on top of the bone here. And that helps things glide a little bit that can get irritated. And so there's, again, there's so many different reasons, but when we're going to look at this muscle, I'm going to show you how to stretch this muscle, how you can manage this and, and ultimately how you can save your, your hip from a lot of discomfort and pain. All right, so the first stretch that we're gonna be doing is gonna be the TFL stretch that goes on the side. Now, this can also be good for your ITB. And so if you're noticing that, you know, you're getting that hip pain on the side, but it's also going down the leg a little bit, then this is gonna be super helpful for that. So all you're gonna do 
is you're gonna take the affected leg. So let's say it's the left leg and you're feeling on the left hip. You're gonna put that in front of the right foot. So you're gonna step out in front and you're just gonna put that out in front a little bit, nothing too crazy. And what I do recommend is have something nearby. So if you're, you have a wall or something like that, that's gonna be super helpful because what you wanna do is as you step out in front, you're gonna bring your pelvis to the side. So you need your pop your hip out to the side and then you're gonna be pushing into that. But if you have a wall, then what you can really do is get your body into the wall as you're pushing your hip. So I have this table here, so I'm gonna use this one. But quite simply, all you're gonna do is you're going to step forward, make sure you got, you know, your, hand, your, your legs are comfortable. Uh, if you're elderly, you can have chair, you can, like I said, have a wall nearby, this is gonna be super helpful. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna pop your hip and then you're gonna bring yourself to one side as you move. So you're gonna feel that on the side and you should feel that right in through your hip. You're gonna hold that for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds but I really think that having the wall there, having some type of stability onto that side and you're pushing your hip into the wall, you're gonna be able to feel that a lot more. I'm also gonna show you how to use a ball, and in this case, a lacrosse ball, in order to break that up directly. Okay, so if we're gonna locate the muscle again, it'd be the hand in the pocket, and where your hand goes in front, that's gonna be where the TFL is. So you're gonna put the ball against the wall and then you're going to put your hip against it as well so i'm going to go right up against the wall here i'm going to place my hip and then i'm going to drive back and forth until i find exactly where that pressure point is and i'm going to hold that pressure point so now i'm holding the pressure point i'm pushing in i can really feel that right now and i don't even have a problem in my tfl so this one you're going to really feel this and you're just holding this. So this is like an acupressure type of release. And you're going to do that. And then you can start moving it around again. You can go back and forth or up and down. But making sure that you're not going right on the side of the bone. Remember how the hip, remember when we're looking at the hip bone? Well, right here, you'll actually notice that the bone sticks out. So you don't want to put the ball right on it. You want to be in this space just above and slightly to the front so you want to make sure that you're right in through the front right there and the last way to do this is really simple you can do this one laying down and that's what i like about this so if you got a lot of pain if you're having a hard time even sitting hard time walking when you lay down so if i'm going to do my right leg so my right leg is going to be up i'm going to be laying down in my bed or on a couch but realistically on the bed and i want the back part here to be where the where you can fall off so nothing behind you the bed is this way so i'm pushing my bum right to the back i'll turn around and show you the other way but what you want to do is bend both your knees to start you want to be grabbing on to something because i don't want you falling off the bed but what you're going to do in this place and if you and if you need to have a couple pillows here to hold uh hold your head up so that way you're not straining your neck trying to do this but what you wanna do is you wanna bring your leg out. So this, the affected leg, you want it to bring it out. And then from this position, you wanna bring it back and down. So you're letting your leg drip below the, uh, the, the table or slash your bed, and you're letting it come down. And that's bringing down my hip, and now I'm getting a stretch. So it needs to be behind and down. And I'll switch around to show you what that looks like but that's the ultimate position. Again, you're holding that for about 30 seconds. Some people will feel this, some others won't, but really the point here is to really, you have to let go. See, I was just even holding on a little bit. I didn't feel it as much. The moment I let go, just let go of it. Now I can really feel that through my hip and it should be drawing everything down. So it's literally pulling everything down. It's actually quite a nice feeling. So I'll turn around, I'll show you how to do this. I'm gonna go right to the back. So I'm gonna go as far back as I can. This foot is gonna be sticking out backwards and down. And then I'll get my foot out of the way here and then I'm gonna let it go. And as I let it go, my foot should come down more and more and now I'm getting more and more of a stretch. 
Again, holding that for about 30 seconds. And then for the last thing that I want you to do is gonna be to strengthen your glutes. Now your glutes are a good way to actually make sure that your low back's having less pressure, but it's gonna strengthen the alignment and it's gonna really help take pressure off of the front muscles, in particular the TFL. So what you wanna do is you wanna do a bridge. I'm just gonna get my microphone out of here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a bridge. So how do you do a bridge? You put your feet on a table. Uh, so you're gonna be laying down at home, find a comfy spot. Um, I would not do this in the bed, I would do this on the ground. So if you have a mat or you just wanna do it on carpet or whatever. But what you wanna do is make sure your shoulders are back, your feet are on the floor, and your feet are gonna to be touching each other. So you want your feet together. Now what you wanna do is you want to do a bridge. So you want to lift your bum up into the air. So you're using and you're contracting your glutes. You're contracting your bum and your feet, your knees should not be together. They should be pointing out. So you should be pointing out, holding that for about five seconds. And then you're going to release and you're going to repeat that 10 times. So you're going to do like a regular exercise, three sets of 10, but if you can start holding that for longer, then that'll be better. So if you could get up to 15 seconds, that would be really good, but really start at five seconds, holding, squeezing your bum, and then letting go. If you're not sure what I mean by squeezing the bum, if you put a quarter in there, don't let it drop. So you don't have to put a quarter, but that would be one way of thinking of it. So I'm squeezing my bum, I'm holding that for a couple seconds. Your arms can be down nice and relaxed. Just keep holding and then bring it down slowly. So <clears throat> start with a five, two count. So it'll be five seconds holding, two seconds relax, then five seconds again. And you're gonna repeat that, like I said, 10 times, three different sets. There's the secret. The secret is the TFL muscle, the one that runs on the side. There's a ton of reasons, again, that you could be getting this problem. And so being under Regular chiropractic care would be a, a good start to make sure that you're getting your spine checked, your nervous system is clear, your alignment is great, and you're flexible. So you wanna make sure that all these pieces are well taken care of. If you're not under regular chiropractic care or you can't access a chiropractor, well then go to your family physician. Make sure that you're being seen, that somebody understands this space and is able to make the proper recommendations. Try these exercises, see how they go see how it feels. If you have questions about it, you can ask me down below. But the ultimate goal here is that I'm giving you the tools that you can make these decisions. You can try this at home. And if you're noticing that it is feeling better, well, I hope that it starts to cue in your brain that maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's another reason for it. And hence why you need to go get this checked. Until next time, I'm Dr. Matt. Have a beautiful day.